In this video tutorial, we will introduce the session editor and discuss specifically counters and context values. The focus of this video will be on customizing the names and default values of existing templates. However, these tutorial videos can also be used as a guide in creating your own game controls from scratch. Where our previous videos in this tutorial series have focused on static text data like team names, venue information, and sponsors, the session editor is a tool for advanced editing of the game's status as well as the names of the various controls that are found in the user interface. Let's go to the session menu and select session editor. In the session editor, we find the line status table, clock settings, context values, specialty counters, toggle settings, and macros. The line status table and the specialty counters are the master tables of all points and stats for the game. Each column represents a period in the game. These can be called halves, quarters, innings, sets, or anything else we may want, and in any language we want. Each row represents a statistic. These stats hold discrete values for each period. This allows us to track points per period as well as the sum of all points for the game. The highlighted column is the current period. This can be changed with the current period selection box. New periods can be added with a maximum of 30 allowed. And existing periods can be selected and deleted. When the game is done, the period output keys will output a final status. We can customize those values here. Let's close the session editor and click the final button. A confirmation prompt will appear to confirm that you want to do this. Click OK, and we can see that the period has changed to final. If we click the final button again, we will be prompted for confirmation, and now we're back to the period we were at when we first clicked final. Let's return to the session editor. Each counter has the following customization options. Prompt dialog will prompt us with a large touchscreen friendly keypad to increase or decrease the counter value by a number larger than one. Allow negative will permit the counter to use negative values and lock control will disable the controls for that counter. Locked counters can still be controlled via macros, which we will discuss in a later video tutorial. Let's activate Prompt Dialog for Counter 2. Leave Counter 3 untouched. Allow Negative for Counter 4. And Lock Control for Counter 5. Now, if we leave the Session Editor and increase the Visiting Team's score, we are presented with a keypad to increase the counter by a value larger than 1. Home score can increase without issue, but cannot go below 0. Visiting shots on goal can go below zero, and home shots on goal is disabled. However, if we click the macro button for home shots on goal, the counter will still be increased. Counters 8 through 13 are considered specialty counters because they are used for game status values that exist outside of or span multiple game periods. Specialty counters have a unique feature attached to them. Let's go to the External CG Settings and Controls tab, and then select the Counter Images sub-tab. The first 10 digits of all six specialty counters can link to a true-false image. For this soccer session, we do not have anything linked for team fouls or saves, but we do have images configured for substitutions. Let's come over to the Output Keys sub-tab. Expand Counter and Toggle Images, and scroll down to Counter 13 Images. See how the first three Counter 13 image states are true and the remaining seven are false? Let's adjust these substitutions. 
we see the states of the images change. Let's scroll the viewer to the right. Now as we adjust the counter, we see the image path change. This provides a flexible option of linking image elements of your choice to a counter in your scorebug. For a more detailed look at integrating the output file with your third-party character generator, be sure to watch our video tutorial series on external CG settings and controls. Let's return to the session editor. The line status table can be used for statistical corrections that are discovered later in the game. For the purposes of creating a new template, most of these cells would have an entry of zero, but there are situations, such as timeouts or substitutions, where the default value is not zero. Sweet CG Multisport Scoreboard template files are made to accommodate English speaking users by default. But the benefit of the session editor is that every control can be renamed to suit the end user's native language. In the last video of this tutorial series, we will discuss how to create a new template so we don't have to continually rename these controls each time we create a new session. All controls can be given dynamic names as well. See how these counters have codes inside the percentage symbols? These are dynamic values that will update when the corresponding data field is modified. As shown here, most controls reference a shorthand name for the two teams. The use of context values varies by sport type. In generic sport types, context values are used only to give general names to counter pairs. We can see here that the context value label also references the output file keys associated with the counters. Counters 2 and 3 are always vscore and hscore in the output file. Counters 4 and 5 are vstat a and hstat a, etc. In other sports, certain context values are used to supply customized wording for unique game statuses. For example, baseball requires verbiage for top and bottom of an inning, and football requires special verbiage for down and distance ball spot, etc. Context values play a critical role in providing customized values for different game contexts. Hence the name. Before we wrap up, let's look at this checkbox in the top left corner of the session editor. For games that involve sets, such as volleyball or tennis, tabulating the score is a little trickier in the user interface. Each column is a single set in the match and the score for that set is what you want to see in the counter controls. Let's take a look. Let's insert some values into the line status table for both home and visit scores. To the right of the line status table, we see the total score. When we close the session editor, the counters display the total scores as well. Let's go back to the session editor and enable match-based play. Close the session editor. Now the counters, with the exception of the specialty counters, display the totals for the current set. When we advance to a new set, the totals in the counters change. Let's take a quick look at the output keys subtab. Scroll up to game status and expand it we see that vscore and hscore are still the sum of all points in the match. But for displaying the score of the current set, you want to use vscore current and hscore current. You can see the same is true for the different stat outputs as well. For more information on the output file for external character generators, be sure to watch our video tutorial series on external CG settings and controls. This concludes the fourth part of our video tutorial series on session and template files. In the next video, we will discuss the session editor's toggle controls.